Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. We have information on the Fen treasure today that is going to completely change the search. We have what we believe could be a possible solution and the location of the chest will give that to you next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Welcome to Men Are So Smart. Ronnie, uh, we have been following the Fen treasure for mm, several weeks now. Oh, and yeah, at least. Yeah. Um, we have heard from many people who have theories on where the treasure is or what each of the clues mean. Right. I received and am in contact with a letter from a searcher who believes he has the concise, full, forest fen treasure reveal. He believes that he has not only solved the puzzle, the poem, right, but he has had boots on the ground, and he has a revelation in this case. We will share his post right now. I mean, I've read... A Hundreds of notes from people who think they've solved several of the clues. Uh, and in looking at them, maybe. Okay, so this, this person... This guy, I think, is on to it. This guy, is his name is Glenn Coughlin. Mm -hmm. And Glenn and I have been texting back and forth. He lives in Australia. And he has divulged his entire reveal on the location of the treasure and something even bigger, which we will get to towards the end of this episode. Stay with us, here we go. He says, the full GPS coordinates of the Fen chest location are 45, 2236.08 North, 111, 2531.89 West. Google Earth Pro it. And he says, so nothing is hidden up his sleeves and he doesn't have any books to sell. Right there, those coordinates will take you to exactly where the treasure should be. Right. Now, he goes on to say that Finn has had months to respond to me, uh, but is in hiding. I have emailed him several times and from different email addresses. Fenn was given the solution, satellite images, and coordinates. Fenn has taken the fifth on the most credible and supported solve ever formulated. His silence doesn't make sense and to me is incriminating. More on that in a moment. Glenn goes on to say, it would literally take days to cover every word, reference, meaning, and photo which are all hints in his books. Now, Fenn has said that the puzzle, the poem, can be solved just from the puzzle, the poem, and a, a map, okay? What Glenn has compiled here, uh, compiled here is the very tip of the iceberg. His releasing a video of the reveal uh, he feels on reflection would just paint him as a lunatic <laughs> by which YouTube would have a field day. Right. Uh, he's saying, I'm simply presenting, putting this up now to prevent, uh, in its present form, to give the full reveal and direct everyone to the satellite images of the chest via Google Earth for themselves. This should satisfy the sensible thinkers, at least. Regrettably, Trolls will always remain trolls. And you know what? I get trolled all the time um, on our YouTube channel. Right. It's really not a big deal. You no. just shut them up and you move on. Right. Or you ignore them and mm -hmm. they go away. Yeah. Yep. Um, understand, Forrest Fenn does not completely tell all the truth. As he says in his preface in The Thrill of the Chase, he says he embellishes. Look up the term in the dictionary, embellish. It means to say things that are untrue. Further in his book, 
Fenn says it's important to tell the truth, but not to tell all of the truth. These are his words from his books and not Glenn's. Yeah, because Glenn doesn't have any books. Nope. Uh, at least not on the Fed Treasure. Glenn Coughlin. Yes. Uh, that was the secret to prof profiling Fenn. Working out his modus operandi, direct his literature, distilling it down to the hints on every single page of his books. It was a business of pure detective work to make sense of Fenn's deceptions. What was relevant and what was not were keys to the location. But as Fenn said, a child could understand the poem and not to complicate it or overcook it and not to mess with his poem. With Glenn's solution, he did just that and it's just that simple. So if you go back and you review the preliminary reveal for more insightful facts about solving Fenn's poem, identifying the location of the treasure chest, should also browse Glenn's Fenn-related images on the site in albums to explain or solve in even more detail. Yes, and I will have these pictures as we're doing this episode, and I'll share some of those with you. Glenn has a Facebook page, and we'll give you that information at the end of this episode, and we'll link it. The chest was hidden 50 miles, to be precise, from the town of Bozeman in Montana, West Yellowstone, home of Fenn's sister June, who married Fenn's friend Donnie, hence the mention of the hint 50 constantly in both books. Uh, Donnie and Fenn camped at Spanish Creek Cabin on Spanish Creek Road. Fenn refers to the cabin to disguise its identity as home of Brown. And remember in our last episode, Ronnie, we talked about this, and how perhaps maybe the reason that this puzzle is not being solved is because people are not taking the clues literally. Overcomplicating. And I suggested that perhaps the home of Brown was nothing more than just a brown house. Right. And that is what Glenn is saying here. There it is. All right. Yeah. Uh, Fenn and Donnie explored Blaze Mountain. Blaze. Blaze Mountain. Right. Yeah and fished the nearby lakes when they were growing up riding horses out exploring West Yellowstone around the Madison. Uh, Blaze Mountain, Montana is situated in the Big Belt Montana uh, mountain range, 13 degrees of true north of Fenn's treasure map. Okay. Hence, all the hints throughout the book as to the number 13. Right, this is a commonality. Uh, Finn's age as 13 mm -hmm. and as the younger teenager. And many times throughout the books, to give directions according to the maps, graduations of 13 degrees. Now, Glenn says he challenges anyone to come up with a more logical or compelling solve that makes more sense below a blaze named Blaze Mountain <clears throat> and with an independent satellite Google image, anyone can go to and review which appeared only after 2009, measuring exactly the chest dimensions when referenced to a nearby fallen spruce's diameter. Uh, the fallen tree in 2014 satellite images was measured as 8 inches in diameter. Uh, when Glenn trekked to the site, compare that with the size of the object as a reference. Fenn clearly gave out the hint for the map to use in his book, uh, Gatlin Forest Map, in the chapter Looking for Lewis and Clark. He even set it ablaze in making it a fire for want of any dry kindling. Interesting. Yes. The chest was hidden out in the open, allowing him an aerial vigil over it from 2010 until a short time after 2014 via an aerial satellite provider. And we know that Fenn uh, also pilots aircraft. Oh, to be sure, yes. yes. Yeah, so he could literally jump in a, a private plane and go over and see that it's still there. Or, or knowing that he's a pilot, knowing the... Um, the proximity of the chest by its, what do you call it, satellite imaging, Right. 
he can tell when people are within 200 to 500 feet of right. the treasure because he himself can look at these satellite maps and he knows the coordinates. That's what I was getting at. Yep. Uh, the chest was hidden nine miles deep inside grizzly bear habitat of Lee Metcalf Wilderness Area, uh, Gallatin State Forest, Bozeman, Montana. Lee Metcalf was an attorney, congressman, and judge, hence all the constant attorney, government, political, parole, punishment, and legal hints and references throughout the books. Okay, so now, this brings us to a very important part of this disclose. And I will show you a picture of this coming up shortly. Listen up. The location of its resting place, the treasure, was upon a flat sandstone rock upon an island within a ford surrounded by waterways, principally a creek called Spanish Creek, of which its source are the Spanish lakes above, hence the clue water high. Okay, now what Glenn is doing here is ex explaining what each of these clues means as he has solved them conclusively in his opinion. Uh, the treasure chest was said by Fenn to be hidden between 5,000 feet in elevation and 10,200 feet. Okay, why 10,200? Why not just say 10,000? Doesn't that, in fact, indicate that the chest is probably between 10,000 and 10,200 feet? Except that now, if you look in the area, well, I'll go on what, what Glenn has uh, found. The ford and island where the chest is hidden, uh, was hidden, are located at an altitude of 8,139 feet. Bingo. Below a mountain that is 10,200 feet high. There we go. This mountain is called Blaze Mountain, hence the blaze. Uh, it's the absolute blaze and only blaze without another that can rival it for relevance and majesty. Blaze Mountain rises 10,200 feet above sea level. If individuals are skeptical of the satellite image, they cannot dismiss this solution in consideration of a mountain named Blaze Mountain and its elevation. I mean, that is so telling right there. Uh, because yeah, normally you would say, well, it's somewhere between 5,000 and 10,000 feet in elevation. Right. But on a topographical map, or if you are in an airplane, it's important to know the heights of mountains in your in, in your vicinity. Here's another interesting fact that Ronnie's about to share with us. Fan has said that he knows people have been within 200 or 500 feet of this treasure. Now, earlier I mentioned satellite imagery, but here is an important clue dismissed. Yeah, many skiers frequent Blaze Mountain to ski its unique ski field that remains even throughout the summer. Ooh, there's a clue. Mm -hmm. uh, the base of this ski field is 500 yards away from the treasure chest locations. The trail taken up to Spanish Lakes is 200 yards north of the treasure chest location. So anytime anyone is just out there skiing, they are within <laughs> 200 to 500 yards of this. Another slight deception, wouldn't yeah. you say? Yeah. All right, unlike Fenn, Glenn says, I tell the truth. I do not engineer deception. I am not a conspiracist, and I don't work off of emotion. I work off fact and evidence. The wet ford keeps wanderers from walking through the water to get to the island and just happening upon it. Okay, so now, um, this is the first part of the reveal, and that brings us to what each of the clues mean, and we're going to break this down. I, I, I had an email from somebody, I don't think I have that window up here. I'm sorry, I had a comment from somebody who said, you two old guys haven't solved this yet. Did you see that comment? No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, he goes, you know, why don't you, you, you say you're going to solve the clues, why don't you solve the clues in the poem? Well, guess what? Glenn claims he has, and he's going to share it. That's the thing about this reveal, Ronnie. Yeah. He has nothing to win no. and nothing to lose. No. Okay? So, 
Uh, what are you saying is well, he, everything... has, he has everything to lose. I mean, he's going to, if somebody, well, now if what he's saying is true, yeah, there is nothing to lose anymore. Okay, and we're going to get to that. Stay with us. Do not go away from our show. Here we go. Poem clues and their solutions. Okay. As I have gone alone in there means Fen going into the location. And with my treasures bold, with his treasure chest all alone. Yep. And he says, I can keep my secret where. That means hiding the chest in a special place. And hint of riches, new and old. Give hints of the chest and the memories he has that go along with them. Uh, begin it where warm walt waters halt. Uh, Bozeman Springs into Gatlin Ridge in Spanish Creek. And take it in the canyon down. Follow canyon along Spanish Creek. N and next one, not far, but too far to walk equals eight miles to the home of Brown. Put in below the home of Brown, uh, is meaning put in below Spanish Creek Cabin. From there, it's no place for the meek, a reference to the little hell roaring creek near Spanish Cabin. The end is drawing nigh, uh, meaning take the trailhead and keep to the left. There'll be no paddle up your creek, which means walk the Spanish Creek Trailhead as the creek is white water. Uh, just heavy loads and water high equals huge eroded granite outcrops all the way along the trail. I'm going to show you some of those. Then go on to Spanish Lakes. Uh, hu oh, I'm sorry. If you've been wise and found the blaze, he equals sight the strip of year round snow on Blaze Mountain. Look quickly down your quest to cease, uh, which he's saying is go down in the valley and look for the chest. But Terry scant with marvel gaze. I like this one. <laughs> A warning not to stay too long in the area because of bears and moose, etc. Uh, and also revise correctly to scant Terry gaze marvel. Uh, true meaning translated as hardly stay in this place very long, looking at a wondrous thing. Uh, so the next, just take the chest and go in peace, obviously means leave with the chest. So why it is, why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? The answers I already know. I've done it tired and now I'm weak. That's Fen's explanation for his ac actions. Uh, so hear me all and listen good. I think that makes reference to uh, his decree. His decree, and, mm -hmm. and maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> so hear me all and listen good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your effort will be worth the cold, means the walk through the ford of ice cold alpine water. And you'll see that. Um, I'll show you that picture. If you are brave and in the wood, the small wood on the island. After the wet walk. I give you title to the gold, which means he assigns ownership of the chess. So the answers to the poem's clues are brief and require further explanation than a single line, but they are sufficient to explain Glenn's solution. There are several reasons why this solution is absolute and cannot logically be challenged or alleged it's wrong. Uh, and here are 11 reasons. Uh, excuse me, the mountain it rested below is called Blaze Mountain. Blaze Mountain is 10,200 feet above sea level. The solution is airtight and conclusive to the very end. Satellite images exist of the chest visually from 2011 to 2014. That is the biggest one right there in my estimation. Uh, number five, every fact he's put down, put forward, is supported by evidence. Fenn on invitation after several emails will not deny Glenn's solve. Uh, the, the brown clue of what brown remains in this case is clear. Home of brown is obvious given the explanation. It's a brown house. <laughs> no other solution is complete or conclusive. None that we've seen. No, and we've seen lots. And no, this is key, no other solution has a satellite image of a chest. Right. And as you can see right here, 
there is the chest. The coordinates to the treasure chest, where anyone reading or hearing this can view the current 2014 and historic images of the chest can be viewed as follows, and I'll, uh, I'll link that below. Um, but he goes on. You will find in these photos an obvious man-made 10 inch by 10 inch by 5 inch rectangular bronze colored box exactly at these coordinates. Explain this box, Glenn defies anyone. Glenn has narrowed it down through satellite imagery magnified to the nth degree to show you that the box is in the place that Glenn determined it would be. Yep. Uh, also, Blaze Mountain is triangulated by green, red, and black mountains. References in the chapter, tea with Olga, red tea, green tea, black tea. There are many lakes in the close vicinity that mean a lot to Fenn. Big Brother Lake, Little Brother Lake, Little Sister Lake, describing his siblings and their order, which is an emotional attachment to the location, perhaps. Also Mirror Lake, which is a hint in his uh, second book, page 255, Too Far to Walk, Mirror on My Wall. So here's, here's the biggest thing though, for me at least. Finn went into the location by horseback. See now, that's a contradiction right there because we have been saying all along that the treasure would be someplace where an 80 year old man could walk it to. Right. Incorrect, no. according to Glenn's solution. Yeah. He is a horseman and he rode a horse in. Yeah. Uh, he, via the back entrance to the Lee Metcalf Wilderness area, using Hammond Creek Trail and then on to Solitary Trail past Hermit Lake and Lake Solitude. Hence, as I have gone in, uh, uh, sorry, as I have gone alone in there, Solitude equals alone. Uh, this was mentioned by Finn. He was going to use it to get to the area if he needed to throw his body upon the chest and have his bones dry out under the sun. Open or out in the open, he would ride by horse, set the animal free, leaving no trace of a vehicle. The details, other than that, are inconsequential. Spanish Creek, Spanish Creek cabin, and Spanish lakes are derived from the constant Spanish hints throughout his book. Look for the word Spanish that appears constantly and repetitively. Uh, the fort on which the island is located is derived from Miss Ford, a uh, teacher that taught Spanish, and the Captain Kidd hint referring to an island which is the island within the ford. Look for the word mentioned constantly as regards a person's name, also a car brand belonging to Skippy, his brother. Hmm. Okay, so now look. It's time we get to the meat of this matter. As I mentioned in the open of the show, I've been communicating with Glenn virtually every day since this reveal. Uh, he lives in Australia. He made two trips from Australia to Bozeman, Montana. And so not only does he believe and we see some truth to this uh, based on facts and a pretty good s solution or solve. What we're seeing is this guy says the treasure chest was there. He located it on satellite and now it's gone. Yeah. So who took it? Where did it go? Yeah. All right. Um, Glenn says he may follow up with more explanation of the solve, but to any sensible person, all of this should suffice. Again, read the two books. Familiarize yourself with all of the above and realize the chest has been recovered and the search is now reg regrettably and with much sadness, over. Glenn says, this hunt is over. Do not, he says, 
become another fatality looking for something now that no longer exists. Come to terms with this fact and evidence and move on with your life. The treasure has been removed from the 45 22 36.08 North 111 25 31.89 West location. It's no longer there. Glenn goes on to say, Ronnie, this location is extremely dangerous. Grizzly bears, moose roam, and lots of snakes in the grass. Well, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the the fast moving ice cold water. I mean, that alone, uh, an eighty year old man isn't going to be able to walk through ice cold, fast moving snow runoff. Mm -hmm. So it is. It's extremely dangerous. Um, these clues all add up. He has a photograph, for God's sakes, of the chest. Um, and then, currently, there's no chest. So how does one explain this? Who took the chest? Well, in order to understand that, Ronnie, I'm sure you know this, you have to look at motive. Right. Now, on a previous show, we mentioned that we would like to have Mr. Fenn on our program. Now, I never imagined that he would respond to that, but I just wanted to make sure that we did extend the offer. Got to throw it out there. And we mentioned how much respect we had for him. Now, it's kind of like Jerry Glanville leaving tickets for Elvis at every Falcons game back in the day. A little bit like that, yeah. yeah. Exactly yeah. like that, <laughs> except no singing or dancing. <laughs> So we never expected that would happen, but we also mentioned we had a lot of respect for him. Glenn questions this at this point. He believes that now that Fenn has seen his satellite imagery, the jig is up. Right. And here we were thinking... And now, this is keeping in mind if Glenn is correct. And right. again, this is the most substantiated evidence and solve that we have ever seen. If he knew that people could see the satellite chest, is it possible that that would be the end of his legacy that he's trying to leave? And would it be the end before he dies? And was that his real intent? And so, when we question motive, I think the pers first person to think of is Forrest Fenn himself. However, there are people out there making lots of money through sponsors sponsorships and advertising by having blogs on this Forrest Fenn treasure. Dahl Neitzel. Uh, How you doing, Dahl? Notwithstanding, he's probably the number one guy who has, money-wise, maybe the most to lose. What about the sale of books? Uh, well, now, Forrest has said that he doesn't get money for the sale of these books. And that the books goes, the, 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 the profits go to cancer research and... What have you. A lot of people say the books are horribly written. Right. So maybe it's not so much the money he makes from the books, but the fame that he gets from people reading them. Right. And let's preface this. Neither one of us have read any of his books. No, we're sorry to say that, but we've done all of the research in and around it. I can tell you, we've right. heard from all of you. And you know what? Again... Nobody is buying his books because he's the next Stephen King. Well, he, here's, yeah. <laughs> he is, he's by all accounts, not a very prolific author. Not, just not interesting. The books are, you know, in some cases, uh, badly written. I have some information from text messages uh, from Glenn here that I, I thought I would share with you. Um, who took the treasure? Is it possible, Glenn, I wrote, that someone else, unbeknownst to you, 
discovered the treasure, perhaps accidentally. He says, where's the announcement? Right. I said, maybe that person doesn't know that this entire, oh, I don't even know what you call, phenomenon uh, exists. Uh, he says, where are the photos? I go off facts, Lou. I said, we really don't know what was in the chest. No one can know that, he says. I don't conspire to say this or that. I just work off facts and evidence. Then how can you know that it was Finn or Dahl who removed the treasure? He says, I do have my own thoughts and suspicions as everyone else. I guess logically you look at motives like detectives do. Who has the most to gain from all of this? If someone did solve the solution, as Glenn has, where is it? Where is this person? Where is the chest? Where are the photos? Where are the anonymous claims? Why has Fenn's bracelet not been returned to him? That, that's number one in my book. Yeah, that's really key here. Yeah. Um, Fenn deplored the finder, somehow in the box, to return the bracelet as he would buy it from them. Like to offer a reward for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and also to verify that it's been found. Exactly. See, this whole thing, Glenn says, makes no sense, and it has just vaporized. I don't buy this. I do not buy someone found it. If it made sense, I really would consider it, Lou. I want the explanation. I wrote to Fenn several times, several emails, polite emails, with the satellite pick and the complete solve and the GPS coordinates. In return, I got complete Zip. silence. Yep. I said, what about Dahl? Uh, he says, uh, I offered him a half a share. He declined it. And um, I, he, I said, well, what did you say to him? And here is his email to Dahl, okay? I journeyed to the new and only site of the treasure, but had to rehearm, return home due to snow. Glenn says, I charted a chopper in, but it was hopeless this time of the year. All the way back to Tasmania, he went. I am willing to put $100,000 where my mouth is, mm -hmm. that I have the location of the chest. I would be willing to share the treasure with you 50-50, provided I get the credit for the solution. Is that the deal of the century or what? I only make it as the USA is a long way from me. I ask you what harm would it do to make contact and have a contract with me, and I disclose to you the location and a military resolution satellite photo of the indulgence. Yes, I have a photo of the chest. Fair warning, doll. Once the snow cover recedes, you're going to be kicking yourself. I promise you, as I have another source, I will engage if you don't take the opportunity. And to give you a clue, brown is the color of brown, okay? Not trout, not anything else. It's just plain old brown. Read the book. Everything makes sense if you look at it as Forrest said, simply as a child. And I know that was a little bit wordy. Glenn can be. But what did Dahl reply? Yeah, this is... Glenn, thanks for the note and offer. But I only use my own solutions and am quite satisfied with my own location and progress. Thanks much for your offer, but I must decline. Good luck, Dahl. He sent him satellite pictures. You know what? Silence. If, if somebody told me that a publisher's clearinghouse check was buried at these GPS locations and it was within my, you know, my resolve to do it and I could easily get there, uh, even if I thought the person was a Looney Tune, you'd still check. I'd go check. So why? So this makes me very suspicious of doll because obviously if this thing is solved I'm, I'm not, I don't know how many people subscribe to his page his blog but guess what overnight they evaporate he goes away it's it's no longer pertinent it's not relevant it's been solved 
Here's a point to consider about Glenn Coffin. He's given you his solve. Would he give you this solve if their treasure was still there? No, he would right. go get the treasure. Right. It's no longer there. That, according to Glenn. Now, what do Ronnie and I believe? We are honestly trying to stay right on the middle of the fence. Now, I know a lot of people are going to look at this video and call this hogwash. Right. I know a lot of people will troll this video. We invite you to troll. But see, here's the thing Glenn wants you to understand with his reveal. He does not want any more people to lose their lives searching for a treasure that according to his solve and satellite imagery is no longer there. Yep. 10 people is the number that Glenn has given me that have died. I thought it was six. It is officially 10. Yeah, it just, uh, I, I, like I said, somebody's pulled it. That's the only thing. Somebody has pulled it and rehidden it or stuck it in a safe or who knows what, but it's, it's just not there anymore. Yep. Okay, say what you will. We're ready for your comments. Yep. We will feel them. We will per post pertinent information in our description below. Um, I'm at this point going to give you my email address and Ronnie will give you his so that you can send us your solves or your comments or your beliefs if you wish to keep them out of the public eye. It's fine. Right. My email address is, and it's really easy, my name is Lou, it's L-O-U, at menaresosmart.com. And mine is Ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E, at menaresosmart.com. Believe it or not, not sure where we stand yet, this is breaking news in the Fen community, and I know for many of you it'll be hard to wrap your head around this, again, we stay on the middle of the fence, uh, but we are looking at facts and evidence. We are looking at what we believe is the closest possible thing to a complete and utter solution. I mean, we, we really don't have a dog in this fight. No, we don't. So, however, obviously, uh, lots of people are following our videos to try to get more solutions. So realistically, this could be hurting our viewership as well if there's a solve. So, um, I mean, yeah, it would sting. But you know what? The, the other side of the coin is I don't think anybody needs to needlessly go out there and search for something that's not there and put your life in danger. All right. That'll do it for this episode of Men Are So Smart. As I mentioned, all of the information you'll find below. We look forward to hearing from you. My name is Lou Gallagher. My name is Corvette Ronnie. And we'll see you on the very next Men Are So Smart.